and all these wounds that America is creating around the world, in the, are these human rights? Is this the concept of democracy? That you become militarily strong, then you run around the whole world, you force them to use your money, you force them to do your, eat your diet, you force them to eat your news and propaganda. On top of that, then you begin to tell them how many children they must have, who they must talk to, which countries they must visit, which countries must not visit. Countries they must use. And, and, and ultimately, now you want to tell us who, who to sleep with and who not to sleep with. Then you begin to see this what called cultural, cultural sodomy of the highest order. Okay, everybody, you're in for a treat today. That is Joshua Mapanga. He is the outspoken social entrepreneur guru, coach and author of several books as well. Uh, he tells us why he feels the disconnect between cultures that accept this lifestyle freely, LGBTQ lifestyle, and uh, those that don't. And ladies and gentlemen, we are getting ready to hit 100,000 subscribers. We would like to uh, ask that you please like and share and subscribe to the channel because we can see that this, this type of content is really uh, sometimes gets a pushback by the media and we're seeing that right now because when people come out with their own opinions and their own ideas of how they feel, uh, the, the West has mistreated the, the rest of the world uh, there seems to be a, uh, a very social uh, ghosting on those channels, such as this one right here. As you all know that have watched this channel, that uh, we sometimes uh, say things that are maybe more opinionated than, than a lot of people. But these are just our opinions, our thoughts. Like uh, Joshua McPonga here is about to speak to you. If you haven't heard of him, I, I suggest you do. I don't agree with everything the man says, but I do agree with a lot of what he says. It's very factual and, and true. Uh, some of it, I mean, and all of this is just our opinions, guys. It's our opinions. This is uh, not to be taken as 100% factual reality. You may agree with some of it. You may not. But some of it will be true. Some of it may not. Um, who knows? That's for the people to decide in their own cultures and their own beliefs. However, Joshua Mapanga, we're going to go on this interview on why he feels and how he feels the West has literally, uh, the continent of Africa ain't budging. The continent of Africa is not budging at entertaining Pride Month, really. I mean, very few selected cities among the region that get paid uh, by the U.S. government uh, it, you know, entice the idea for the money. But if anyone hasn't noticed, it's all of those white majority uh, countries that are so emphatically pushing this thing on the children, mainly. It's, it's to get the kids. Um, but Africa knows this more than anything, more than anyone out there, that the, the way the system works. Um, now that I think about it, Africans are probably more aware of how the system works than, uh, than we are. They, ladies and gentlemen, they've got the history on the colonization of the Westerners. They've got the history. They've dissected it. They've dismantled it, and they've disavowed the indoctrinations and practices that created the strongholds of their culture for centuries. But that day's over. The new Africa has sprung forth. So as they've grown up within this sovereignty of their country, and they have historically strong family bonds, and that's one thing that separates their culture from that of uh, the, the Western values, or lack thereof, I should say. Um, but this is one area where they drew a line in the sand. They drew the line in the sand. You want some food for thought. Then I suggest you listen to this piece with Joshua Mapanga as to why, the, uh, why Africa is not entertaining this thought of the LGBTQ movement uh, or religion, as some would call it, uh, in Africa, as are not uh, a 95, 98 percent of the people in the entire on the entire earth that are saying, no, this isn't happening. Uh, so, but so why do we let this happen in the West? And as Joshua Mpanga goes over this, I would like to just say he's pointing out the he's pointing out the playbook of the West and what they're doing to infiltrate it here. We'll go over that right now. So, ladies and gentlemen, grab a drink and. Let's dive in. Hey, what's your stance and, and, and on this rise of, of this forced ideology and thought on us whereby, you know, you're more likely to see an LGBTQ plus uh, couple on, on screen in your media than you are to see a black uh, family that's happy on screen. Um, can you elaborate on that? Well, what's the current state of, of things as they are right now? Media is propaganda. You hardly see a portrayal of a family, mother, father, and daughter, and son, growing, living together. It's, it must always be dysfunctional a, sort and, of a, thing. And just to add what you're saying, have you seen how the Russians and the Chinese are portrayed in every movie again? 
Oh, was, was, the what? Russians are always the ones who are trying to temper with the nuclear weapons. And somewhere. aggressive. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the Chinese, and, and, and it's deliberate. But now that we have media in our own hands, as Africans, we, we must be careful of falling into that trap of the popular norms and, and, and propaganda that is condescending to African culture and, and, and its people. And, 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 and as such, the, the portrayal of family becomes the building of a family. The, the destruction of family in terms of media becomes also the destruction of family because people are impressionable. People work with perceptions and the quality of perceptions that you put out there as to what is this like. I mean, if you look at even the LGBT space, b before media, if media was not there, this would be taboo. Yeah. But it has slowly been put into media and what was once uh, unacceptable is now receiving some warmth and worse still, that actually, from my own experience, the, some of the greatest Mongols in the media space are of homosexual behavior. You know, I'd like to speak on that to the Africans and African Americans and the world out there. We're speaking to you. Yeah. I remember a, a time in America where you don't see that stuff on TV because it's just, it's gross. We just thought, Ugh, what? What, what were they showing there, or what were they implying with that started with commercials with that commercial why were they implying that what what something doesn't click right and i like what mcponga said there there are a lot of people a lot of people the majority of the ones pushing this the mainstream media is a huge bunch of uh lesbian and gay and, and homosexual people that really want to push their agenda to get more because if you can't produce, you have to convert. And through media is the main deception, the biggest deception they use on this is through media. And when the government gets connected with the media and they can think about how to uh, get votes, then that's what it's all about. Getting the votes and pushing this agenda to basically weaken their society and strengthen the government. That's just my thought. We'll go further into this and let me know how you feel. It's like, it's like it's, it's, you know, like um, uh, there are two instances that happened recently. I think yesterday or today in Indonesia, the Indonesians, were, were they, they barred the, the delegation for the LGBTQ rights. They're like, no, not here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in Uganda, mm -hmm. he's getting flake. The guy's getting flake for saying we won't tolerate this. Mm -hmm. So my question then becomes, why is this on top of the priority list instead of people who are dying with famine, wars, mm. uh, hunger? How, what people are doing in the bedroom? Why is it being an agenda that's being forced down our throats? I need to talk about that real quick. It's a good point the man made. Why is, why is the West coming at us with this, saying you have to? This is human rights. You have to do this in order to be, you know, get money from the from the West, from the banks and stuff like that. You have to abide to this we have to push pride we have to throw some rainbow flags up in your area in order for you to do this why are they pushing it because it weakens the society because not and they're just not just out to weaken it they're out to control it now if they can get the weak-minded and get this and say okay well we've still got this stronghold we can hold them by this now now we've got this on them. now we've got another grip here with the lgbtq that we have that they have to abide by and that's just my thought. But Africa didn't budge. They're not budging. They said, no, take your money, take your thoughts, take your, take your military and get out. Just enough. Enough with you guys. We're going we're gonna to go, we're going to go talk to Putin. We're going to go talk to China. We're going to go talk to these other countries. These all the majority of the world that just thinks you guys are just sick and nuts and crazy and going against family values, going against their faith, going against their Bible, going against my, my savior. Your, your savior, our savior, but for those who believe. Let me know what you think, and we'll continue going on with this. It just it gets me, guys. Let me know what you think. What people are doing in the bedroom, why is it being an agenda that's being forced down our throats? That's the, that, I've always tempted the arrogance of the, of the Americans, that uh, in, in the United Emirates, in China, in Indonesia, and other parts of the world where even human rights are being violated. It's not an issue. They were in Afghanistan the other day 
where women aren't even allowed to work. That's, those are human rights at, 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 at proportional of spaces. You get into the Middle East where people are even stoned and killed. Not that they will be. They are being stoned and killed. Now, Mr. Venus just made a law that says, I will. <laughs> if you are caught, you will be. He has not yet done anything. And the whole Western world wants to, wants to run around and castigate him. We only understand the agenda of the Americans and their hypocrisy at that level, that you would rather be discussing issues of matrimonial you know, flavors when sick people, when wars are happening, the Black Lives Matter in America, where children are dying in America, where black people are disenfranchised in America, and they've not even finished yet fixing up the mess they caused in Libya. We're not even uh, talking about Iraq, about we'll Afghanistan. Talk about that, and, and all these wounds. Let's say a lot on what he just said there. China, Indonesia, all these other countries, Emirates, they, they will kill you. Homosexuals, they will kill you. America is very lenient. Very lenient. Not only lenient, but now forcing it down your throats. That's what he, Why are they forcing this down our throats? Because you're Africa, and they're used to force, forcing things down your throats. They've done it for centuries now, and they, they think they can keep doing it, but they just don't know how far that you've come, but they're figuring it, they're finding out. They are finding out in 2023, 2024, they have found out more about Africa and how the Africans really feel about the way that they're treated than they ever have before. The West is going crazy. The West is losing it. They're losing their grip. They've lost, actually, I could say they, they've, they've lost their grip. Fixing up the mess they caused in Libya. We're not even uh, talking about Iraq, about we'll Afghanistan. Talk about Iraq. And, and all these wounds that America is creating around the world, in the, are these human rights? Is this a concept of democracy that you become militarily strong? Then you run around the whole world. You force them to use your money. You force them to do your, eat your diet. You force them to eat your news and propaganda. On top of that, then you begin to tell them how many children they must have, who they must talk to, which countries they must visit, which countries must not visit. Which countries they must use. And, 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 and ultimately, now you want to tell us who, who to sleep with. <laughs> and who not to sleep with. Then you begin to see this what called cultural cultural sodomy of the highest order. Let me know what you think. Everything he just said, he wrapped it up in a ball. He just wrapped it up in a ball and boom, threw it out there. Do you feel like we've got a shortage of male leadership in, as, a, as, a, as an African society? There, there's a gap of male leadership that is there intentionally, intentionally so for commercial reasons, colonial commercial reasons that you cannot have a nation that builds strong people who can lead themselves. The governments and the colonial system needs people it can manage, not people who can think and transform their community, because they become a nuisance in a community. In fact, it is easier to build beer gardens and, uh, so that people can get drunk than building leadership institutions. It's easier to manage drunk people than to manage sober people. It's exactly how the, uh, if you think about it, it's how America was uh, taken over. It's, it's how the country, the, the land, the United States was got, gathered. Uh, the West came to America, the Indians inhabited the land, and the West was bringing tokens, things the Indians never had. One huge one was liquor. So Indians were waking up in the morning after a big hangover, realizing they signed documents and papers and the, and the people with the guns were saying, okay, get off our land. You signed, you signed the agreement here. What do you mean we signed the agreement? Well, we gave you, you know, two cases of scotch out there and a case of gin and three cases of vodka. It's right there. You, here's the paper for your land. You can go now. They made bad decisions while they were drinking and, having, and doing these discussions. I just want to say, put that out there because that happened as well, in case you didn't know. But... This is what Mpanga was saying here. How do you feel about that? So now Africa saying, no, 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 we don't want the liquor. We don't want the liquor. We need, there's other things that are a little bit more important to us for our land. Let me know. It's easier to manage drunk people than to manage sober people. You know, you talk of uh, South Africa, <laughs> EFF, and you know, like you talk of um, Zimbabwe, uh, Zambia, Nigeria, all over the continent. Do you feel like the revolutionary parties that liberate the countries? Um, I've said this to EFF uh, 
a dozen times. I've said this to Chamisa and CCC a dozen times. And I'll say it again, even here, and put it on record. You cannot be talking about a revolution without knowledge. And you cannot talk about a revolution when, in fact, you just want to become the new colonizer yourself. The question is, what are you going to do differently? Because the issue is not leadership. The issue is the quality of software, the policies, the constitutions that govern that office that you're putting a person into. It's all right. Tomorrow morning, boom. We put Chamisa as president in a country. The courts are still standing. The legal frameworks are still standing. The immigration policies are still standing. The banking laws are still standing. The agricultural laws are still standing. Tourism is still standing. And the rest of the information. And until the African child understands that you cannot be swapping hyenas with foxes, it's, it's, the issue is not leadership. The issue is we as a people. Are we aware exactly as to what is it that is governing us? That's good. That's good. It's good so many times, and I, I agree that it's... It, it does have a big deal in my in my thoughts. We we don't agree with everything. I do agree. I do disagree with them there. That I believe it is the leaders, hundred percent, not hundred percent, ninety percent, is the leaders that they put in that say they're going to do this in Africa, but they don't do it. Which is where we're seeing like uh, leaders like Ibrahim Traore, uh, Sam George, uh, Kagame, uh, Museveni, and a bunch of these African leaders that really are just standing their ground and saying okay this is the new laws that we're implementing these are the constitutional laws and this is how we're going to manage it so you get those leaders that actually put these laws into place that, that promote your country and your ideas and in your new you know just way of thinking about things and now we start seeing these leaders that have taken charge that are, have stepped up to it and the, a lot of these things that the West is like Pride Month and, you know, these things aren't flying over there because it's not who they are. And I just want to say I want to thank you all for watching. Once again, watching the Speak and See show, please like subscribe and uh, click that notification button. So when we get this information out, you can get the information in. We love you all. Praying for you all. One love. We'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.